Hi, and welcome back to Dubai Real Estate Philosophy. My name is Ahmed and this is the second part of our consecutive comprehensive community guide tours in Dubai. And for those of you who missed out our Dubai Hills Estate video, you can go check that out on the above link. Now we are here in gorgeous Mina Rashid. As you can see behind me, the beautiful water views. Obviously the yachts are standing right now, same like we did in Dubai Hills Estate. This is just to show you the gorgeous views that are here in Mina Rashid, right? This is one of those communities that is super undervalued right now in my opinion because for those of you who've been to beachfront you have similar views of marina obviously the beach and all that and over there the price per square foot is around 4,000 to 5,000 dirhams per square foot and Mina Rashid started from 1,500 dirhams per square foot and right now currently for those of you who missed out on that boat right now currently we are standing at around 2,000 to 2,300 400 dirhams per square foot so this is still excellent opportunity in my opinion is the most undervalued community right now by MR in Dubai. For those of you who missed out our maritime city video as well, we were standing over there in that Anwa building. We we're gonna see the gorgeous views from there. We're gonna see some B-roll as well. Then we'll go to the master plan community right now in the Amar sales center right in front of us. And we'll go over the master plan and understand what Amar wanted to bring with Mina Rashid waterfront communities. And as I always say on our YouTube channel, there are two communities that give the best returns on investment. And that is golf course communities, which was Dubai Hills Estate. Again, for those of you who haven't watched the comprehensive tour for that, you can check that out. And it's waterfront and it doesn't get any more waterfront than this gorgeous views of the water. There's also a small beach that's going to be coming up by Mar in the future. Maritime City is right there. That building that you see standing there, that was Anwa. We're going to show you some shots from Anwa as well to see how gorgeous the water views are right now. So let's go to the sales center. Let's go over the master plan and see why this is the most undervalued community in Dubai by Mar. Now we are standing in the Mina Rashid sales center here in Mar. We just came from the outside marina view, as you guys saw, and this is an entire master plan of the community, right? And and if you can see over here, this is Maritime City. This is basically the B-roll shots I was showing you guys and the Maritime City we showed you. And the view was coming like this. And of course, over here, we can see the entire marina. Now, speaking a bit more about the buildings that came from Imar, we basically had all these launches that are done. Now, we're moving basically uh, towards that side. And if you can see, the entire master plan is in a V-shape. And sooner, we're going to have eventually this entire master plan community completely owned, operated, maintained, and managed by Imar. And that is one of the key points that we have. Because if you see on that side, the white building blocks, that is basically Dira or Old Dubai. And that is where... Uh, almost 70% of the Dubai population lives and they do not have a master plan community because if we see on the map, Dubai Hills Estate, Beachfront, all the other communities like Imar South, they're pretty far off. So this is the one option people have to move into a master plan community. Again, we always talk about the lifestyle uh, that Imar provides and this is definitely, again, one of those same kind of communities where we have schools, hospitals, all these kind of things coming up in the community and of course the gorgeous views. Now, of course, we had all these old launches, for example, Seascape, Clearpoint, all these things that you can see that are already here. We have more buildings coming up. And again, as I mentioned, the pricing for all this stuff started way back at 1,500 dirhams per square foot. Now, if we look on the main map, this is again along the shoreline of Dubai and where we had Imar Beachfront, we're looking at already 4,000 to 5,000 dirhams per square foot. And right now in Mina Rashid, it started all the way back from 1,500 dirhams per square foot. And if you miss the boat on that one, this is still an excellent opportunity because the price per square foot right now is still at around you know 2,000 plus. We're looking at maybe 2,500 tops. So definitely still an excellent community, an excellent opportunity. And again, as we always talk about in the channel, there are always two communities that you always need to invest in, either it's golf course. So for those of you who missed out our Dubai Hills Estate complete tour, you can see that one and that was a golf course community and this is a waterfront community. So looking from this angle, again, as we saw waterfront community, we have all these things that basically you can see the entire V, the cruise liners that are standing there in the models. And these are actual cruise models uh, that basically, you know, the cruise ships that keep coming up. So there's a lot of commercial traffic that's coming in here. All these things might be removed future later down the line when MR completely takes over this master plan community and comes up with their entire buildings, their schools, their hospitals, and all these 
these you know features and amenities that make this a great investment and of course if you want to live for yourself in gorgeous waterfront apartments this is an excellent option as well so these were just some of the things that we wanted to show here you know by being here you guys got a glimpse of basically the marina views you saw all the yachts standing and all these things and this was just a tour of basically the master plan now we'll go to the presentation board we'll look over again the historical analysis we'll see the pros and cons of this community and then we'll wrap it up from there so let's go to the presentation so now we are basically back at the presentation screen and as you guys just saw the Mina Rashid the beautiful views of the marina in the sales center we understood a bit more about the master plan so now let's get more into the presentation understand a bit more about Imar and why Mina Rashid is such a great value in my opinion speaking a bit more about Imar obviously here we have the Burj Khalifa in New York lights. Now, just a bit about Imar. Again, Imar was founded in 1997. Okay, and as you guys are going to see, they have delivered over a hundred thousand units, and of course, they do have a presence in ten countries, right? So, these guys, I always say in my videos, even if you guys saw the Dubai Hills Estate one, these guys are very financially stable. They're a public limited company. They are on the stock exchange. So, as you can see, we have Imar UAE, India, Pakistan, Saudi. Uh, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, Turkey, Lebanon, and even across the pond in the United States as well. So these guys are no new player. They are, have been existing for a long, long time. And these are just some of the performance highlights that they had in 2023. As you guys can see, they made 37.4 billion dirhams in sales. Okay, launches. We had two new master plan communities coming up as well. Uh, and of course, the handover statistics, as I said, just in 2023, they handed over 10,000 units. And till date, all the way from 1997 till 2024, they've handed over over 100,000 units. So this is one of those, again, tier one developers, one of the best developers in Dubai, in my opinion. So when these guys come into a community, when they decide to build something, when they decide that, OK, this is something that we're going to focus on, they bring in their engineering might, their master plan designing might. And they really take that area and they develop it better. And you're going to see, as a matter of fact, that all the communities that are surrounding MR communities also gain value just for the fact that they are next to an MR master plan community. And Mina Rashid, again, is going to follow the same pursuit. So now imagine if you're in that community, which is causing all the other areas surrounding it to also appreciate in value. This is, again, just an, a testament to how Imar operates, how they develop the brand that they have created, the vision that they have for the future as well. For those of you who haven't seen our complete comprehensive guide on Dubai Hills Estate, you can go click the link in the video as well, and you can go check out our comprehensive guide on Dubai Hills Estate. Now, let's stick to Mina Rashid, and we'll talk more about that community. So, Mina Rashid, the ultimate in coastal living. And if you guys remember, even while we were there in the sales center, I was comparing this community to Imar Beach front and we're going to see again in the presentation slides on why they're you know an excellent comparison and how this is basically the beginning of how if you were in beachfront in the early days and now beachfront is obviously where it is uh now rashi yachts and marina aligns with dubai's vision 2040 you know it's one of the last available natural waterfront destinations dubai to be developed into a complete and integrated community that is all what it's about when it comes to mr it's all about the community and the lifestyle and for those of you who are wondering about vision 2040 uh sheikh maktoum himself obviously the ruler of dubai as you can see in the prime minister of the uae they have developed a vision 2040 where you know by 2040 we are seeing almost 40 percent increases in uh all sectors across the board when it comes to dubai so we're looking at more exports we're looking at more increased gdp increased gdp per capita as well they want people to be wealthier they want people to be more prosperous and of course 40 percent of dubai they want to make green so all these things are basically factored in and you're going to see these changes coming in as the developers also make communities nowadays there's a huge trend of communities going green so for example Ralph Woods came it was a forest design you know Shoba Elwood again forest inspired design so all these developers are also you know aligning with that Dubai 2040 vision of making sure there are more green spaces obviously Dubai you are in a desert so it does get quite hot for the summers obviously the rest of the nine ten months it's fairly okay but their design their uh, their vision for that is that if we have more trees obviously we'll have more greenery you know it'll make it a more beautiful place to live especially for people who are coming all the way from Europe and setting up shop in Dubai it'll make him feel a bit more like home now this is the present obviously this is queen elizabeth ii uh if you guys remember when we were standing in the video we were standing basically right here in the marina side so this is queen elizabeth ii ship this is basically a very nice hotel very famous hotel it is a permanently parked ship over there and it is operating as a hotel and 
uh, basically the backdrop you see, this is an animated, this is an actual shot in the night. Uh, this is how exactly the uh, Burj Khalifa views are, the Dubai skyline uh, views are from Mina Rashid as well. So, you know, excellent area for there to be night. And of course, the morning views, we already saw how gorgeous the place looks like. This is, again, another shot of the master plan that we were looking at from the sales center. So the sales center, when I was showing you guys and showing you guys the video, basically, we we're standing over here in front of the marina. And you can see all these buildings are going to be coming in the future development, even across, uh, basically, the marina side. This entire master plan community is going to be developed by MR. Right now, there are multiple, you know, commercial spaces, uh, different developers, you know, random developers making commercial spaces, you know, cafes, shops, all these things. But those will all be changed into this gorgeous master plan community with that lifestyle uh, for sure. So you can see gorgeous views at night as well as in the day. Again, it is a world-class super yacht hub as well. In our video, as you saw in the beginning, there were a lot of yachts parked over there. Uh, Mina Rashid is one of the famous marinas. Again, Beachfront also has a marina. Uh, it's called the Dubai Harbor. Then, of course, we have Bulgari Island and then we have Mina Rashid. So these are one of the, you know, the three marinas that are available in Dubai. So if you have a yacht, you have a fishing boat, all these things, you can park it up there. And of course, it counts for excellent views as well for the resident. This is another shot of the marina. Again, by this point, you guys have a well understanding. We went there on location. We showed you guys. So again, it's not just renders. And as I always say, even in our old videos in Dubai Hills Estate, it's not just about showing you guys renders and then delivering something else. MR, it's all about bringing renders to reality. This is what they do. This is what they're good at. And this is what they're known for. And that's why there's so much trust in this developer. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen our Dubai Hills Estate video, you can go check that out. Again, we showed you renders of the park and then we showed you the real park. Uh, over here, we're showing you renders of the marina and we showed you the real marina. Again, these guys, when it comes to construction quality and design and bringing the renders to reality, they are fairly experienced. These guys do have the longest swimmable canal pool in Dubai. Rather than a square shape, they have a nice, long, horizontal shaped swimming pool. It's actually the longest swimming pool in Dubai. So that's something cool. Obviously, you can't really swim in the marina area. It's very deep. It's meant for ships. You have a lot of commercial uh, boats passing there. So it's not ideal for fishing or swimming. So MR is taking care of that. Obviously, they, you will be having all these swimming pools for all the communities inside. And of course, they have this cool uh, canal style living as well so uh, you know it really gives you that venice type feel again speaking a bit more about the strategic location as i mentioned in the beginning these are all of the communities that imar has right so beachfront emirates living dubai hills estate one of the most favorite and if you look at the shoreline that's basically where it is here right here we have imar beachfront and we have mina rashid so again you're on the shoreline we'll look about the price per square foot in a minute over here and then you guys will get a better understanding again excellent location you have schools hospitals churches masjids all these things that you might need for again the lifestyle and uh, one of the reasons this is so strategically located again as they mentioned in Bur Dubai or Dira side that's where 70 percent of Dubai's population lives and Dira Bur Dubai that's known to be the old uh, Dubai so there's no master plan community in that area obviously all the development is coming to the new side of Dubai so if you're someone who has a shop there who has a business there who's been in Dubai maybe 20 30 years and you're looking for that lifestyle, but you have a shop here, you have a business to maintain. You don't want to go all the way to the new side and, you know, have a commute of maybe 40, 50 minutes every day just to get to your business. You want to live close by. And that's why a lot of people haven't bought in those communities who are residents of Dubai because they were looking for something that's close to home, close to their business that they have to manage. So this is an excellent opportunity. You can see how close it is to the Dira side. Plus for the residents who already live in Dubai, but of course, if you're coming from the outside, Again, there really is no better place when it comes to waterfront. Just another shot. Again, you can see the statistics over here, uh, how much retail area they have, the total area. You know, we're looking at 1.5 million square meter community. So massive size. This is just a top down view of the community. Again, we saw in the sales center, the actual model. Now, this is where the opportunity is at. And this is what I was talking about. This is an excellent picture to show the price per square feet of communities in Dubai. Now, as we know, if you guys see at the top, where the Palm Jumeirah is. In Palm Jumeirah, we're looking at almost 6,000 dirhams per square foot. In beachfront, on average, we're looking at 5,500. And in Marina, which is right below it, we're looking at 2,300. Or JLP, we're looking at around 2,300. Now, this has price has been going crazy. And that community is not even fully developed yet. Beachfront is only 25% completed. But because obviously it's waterfront, there's very less land that's available along the shoreline. Just look at all the prices along the shoreline. Palm Jumeirah, 6,000. Mr. Beachfront, 5,500. MJL or, you know, opposite Burj Al Arab, we're looking at 3,000. And Jumeirah Bay Islands or Bulgari, that's around 3,500. And then right next to it, even if you come down towards the mainland, you're seeing Dubai Hills Estate, 2,200. 
2,100. Mark Golf is getting all those areas, 2,000, 2,100. The thing is, if you're still along the shoreline and you're not coming mainland, you're still getting the prices of mainland for being waterfront. So this is why it's an excellent opportunity and it won't always be like that. And the reason this is possible, right? People might think, oh, maybe they're skimping on quality. There's something that we don't know. No, look, the secret is Imar, all these guys, they're big developers, right? They can get land from the government on a very low prices. These guys, they have strategically bought all the hotspot locations long time in advance. So back when Imar bought it, it wasn't obviously as expensive as the waterfront land is now. And of course, these guys are massive developers. As you guys just saw, they delivered over 10,000 units just this year. So you can imagine the economies of scale that these guys have. It's not like they're building one building or two building a year. They're building sometimes 10, 15, 20 buildings a year. So the economies of scale, the engineering price that these guys have, uh, obviously the efficiencies and the material sourcing, the logistics to support, all these things are very well versed. And that's why they can bring that cost down. And they could easily charge you 3,500 and it will still be sold out because it's still a waterfront community. But Imar, for the first investors, obviously for the people who believe that's where the people are taking the highest risk, the highest chance, that's why you get rewarded and Imar passes on those savings to you as well. But obviously as the buildings keep developing, this is why this is such a great opportunity because as the phases keep launching, people start living there, the prices, you can imagine they're going to shoot up just like they did in Beachfront. Beachfront right now, again, it's only 25% complete. And when we started, beachfront was also like around 3,000. And right now, currently, the average price is around 5,500. So you can see the massive opportunity over here. Again, 2,000 dirhams per square foot. And it's run all the way from 1,500. So it has already increased 500 dirhams per square feet, right? And now this is just a chart of basically the growth. As you can see, beachfront from 2021, it used to be 2,500, as I said. And now, two years down the line, 25% of the community, the construction has been completed. There are people living there now. You know, some of the buildings they have already been launched, they're already ready. People are living there. And you can see the price jump that they have. They're looking at almost 100% capital appreciation in two years. Now, these numbers are unheard of, obviously. And if you buy anywhere else, we're looking at maximum 20, 30% uh, percent capital appreciation. But with the land being so scarce, with the views being so gorgeous, with the sandy beaches right in front of you, obviously it's very hard for it to not appreciate. And people really look at these things and they understand the value that it's going to have for the potential, you know, rental income, or if you want to live for yourself in a gorgeous area in Dubai as well. And Mina Rashid, as I said, 2023 to 2025, they are expected to have at least 50% of that capital appreciation. Now, again, these are risk averse numbers. There is no doubt that we can see 100% as well. But even if we slash that in half, we're still looking at a 50% growth of at least 3,000 just two years down the line when the projects start rolling out. And similar, if you come down to Dubai Hills Estate, again, more inland, they have also seen around 57% increase from 2021 to 2023. And Creek Harbor also has seen around 50% from 2021 to 2023. Now, again, I always say people are like, oh, maybe it's a bubble. Maybe people, they're just, they're just on a buying spree or they're all these big investors. Look, you have to understand, as I always say, it's not a bubble. Reason being, it is not debt finance a majority of the people are end users we have small investors who sometimes maybe buy two three units sometimes they might buy nine ten units as in a floor okay and it's very rare that some investor comes in and they buy the whole building but even in that case they're not financing the housing or the construction through debt that is the most important difference people do not understand in dubai debt is not used to finance the construction unlike if you see if you remember our last video we also put a clip i'll put that clip here these are ghost towns in China that are being demolished because the government gave away cheap money and they developed. That does not happen here in Dubai. The government does not finance any construction debt. Financial institutions do not finance any construction. You, the end user with that payment plan or the small time investors who are buying a couple of units, they are the one who are financing these projects and they will always be the ones financing these projects. And that lock is what keeps Dubai supply and demand very controlled rather than developers just borrowing money and building townhouses or building bridges to leading to nowhere, they actually have to look if there is demand, then they launch a project. And if people buy, then they're successful. If they don't, then the project doesn't go through. That is how it works. You always have to understand the demand and then you have to match the supply to it. It's not that there's just going to be oversupply. And at the end of the day, we're left with, you know, a ghost town buildings that don't have any end users. That is why it is not a bubble. Now, we're not going to get too technical into the details. Obviously, that'll extend the video. But if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to uh, reach me on my number and we can discuss about the finances, the interest rates, all these kind of, you know, technical details that I won't want to bore you with right now. We can go in depth if you reach me uh, through my number at the top right corner. Best value proposition. 
for the lifestyle bar it does provide that you know luxury premium lifestyle end user it's a premium community with family centric amenities again schools hospitals these are all the things that matter and for the global investor we're looking at excellent high returns and capital appreciation as we just saw the breakdown right now in the presentation so this was just a short presentation and a short video explaining to you guys about Mina Rashid why it is one of the most undervalued communities in my opinion again if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching this video I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye for now.